What's going on everybody and welcome to part 16 of the Python AI and StarCraft 2 tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be doing is working over some of the visualization changes that we would like to make here. So one, we, we definitely have new units that we need to be able to display, uh, but also someone posed the question to me, why are we doing um, you know, RGB? Why are we doing three, actually it's BGR, but why are we doing three channels here? Um, why not grayscale? Wouldn't that be simpler? And I didn't really have an answer to that. <laughs> so, so, so why not grayscale? So, so I am going to just try to do grayscale. Now um, we'll get to it, but I, I also really wanted to be able to do like an alpha kind of channel, um, but I I just could not figure out how to do it. So if somebody has a solution to that, uh, that'd be great. So anyways, um, let's get started. So the first thing is, um, we're really just gonna be changing the Intel method as soon as I find it. And, and basically we're just gonna, I'm just gonna clear it out. We're gonna redo basically everything here. So game data can stay, we'll keep that. So you'll, you'll note that yes, we are starting still uh, with three channels. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do everything we need to do and then at the very end, we'll convert it to grayscale. There's probably a way better way to do that. Um, but we're gonna do it this way for now. So, um, all we're gonna do is just begin iterating over um, our units and then the enemy units. So again, I'm just gonna copy and paste these in from the text-based version of the tutorial, link in the description. Um, and uh, so yeah, so all we do is for units and our units, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab their position, um, then we just draw the circle on the game data. So same thing as before, only this time we use the units radius attribute that, that's like always been there. I just didn't use it. Um, so thanks to our Kyatris for pointing that one out and maybe other people, but that's who I saw it from. Uh, then uh, we're gonna draw this in all white. And then this is just the line thickness for, um, for the actual thing that we're gonna draw. So um, that's our units. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing only with the enemy units. So we'll just copy this, fix this. Um, and in this case, uh, this should just be self.known enemy units. We grab their position, we draw it, everything's the same. The only difference is I'm gonna do 125, 125, 125. So we are a bright white, they will be a gray. Now we could, make this a little more fancy and um, you know do different colors for like buildings versus workers versus military units blah 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 blah. we get really advanced here for now I'm just gonna keep it super super simple and just see what we can how far we can get with this um, also this just creates a circle again because I couldn't figure out the alpha I'll explain that a little more in depth in a moment then uh, we're gonna draw our beautiful line so I'm just gonna paste that in You've seen this code. The only thing that's changed here is it, rather than being like the military units, now it becomes a worker weight. So this way I don't have to know what are all the military units that we have. Instead, we're just gonna count the number of workers because there's only really one worker. So um, that's just a little easier to keep track of there. Now we're gonna finish off the code. <clears throat> so after the exception, the exception is mostly for uh, div by zero issues that we're gonna get uh, by doing these calculations here. Like if we run out of workers or, um, you know, whatever. So, um, or I suppose this could also equal zero. Um, anyway, uh, okay. So I think I think we're ready to actually run this one. <laughs> this one already, this will be a, one of the shortest tutorials ever. Whoa, I didn't know I was capable. Oh, fa <laughs> fell in for that same thing again. Uh, let's go. Here, I'll bring this one over, up, and this time it's part 16. Visualization changes. I uh, don't see any errors yet. So, thank you to my most recent sponsors, Brett Raugust. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Usually I can look up names and figure out like how to pronounce them, and for some reason that name doesn't, ever, doesn't have a how to pronounce. JT, Mojo, and Robert Diamond, thank you guys very much for your support. And we are off. So now you can see our visualization. Here we are, everything's nice and, and grayscaled. And at least with the way things are set up, like right now we can see, you know, I was so bothered about, you know, where was I gonna put the camera? And I completely forgot that this, I haven't been full screening the game for a while. <laughs> anyway, 
So here's our, our scout going in. Boom, we found an enemy nexus, clearly, and then a bunch of things. There's all their little workers, and we're just kind of floating about here doing who knows what. Eventually, we're going to die. And uh, so, yeah, so, so we can clearly tell what's going on. We can see that they've already begun expanding. Um, although, I think that we're kind of displaying things not quite perfectly because I think we required our units to be ready, and we didn't require their units to be ready uh, to graph them. Or, I don't know, display them. Anyways, um, yeah, so so we can tell pretty well our strength. We can tell that uh, these probably are workers. They don't take up much space. We've clearly got some buildings here. I'm gonna guess those are pylons. We can we can confirm that though. They look awful close to each other. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing. Let me see if I have that actually modified. So look at all these pylons. <laughs> so someone else, I forget the name, I, and I apologize, um, but someone did point out. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me go to pylon. Where's our build pylon func or method rather? Right, so this was an interesting piece of code that I don't think I referenced yet. If I have, I apologize profusely. Anyways, we can build a pylon near self.init's nexus at the first position. Oh dear, I've started dragging. At, at the first position towards the game map center. What an ingenious way. So that stops things from being built, like we were building a lot of buildings and stuff in the pathway here, which is obviously pretty unfortunate. We don't really want to do that. So I tested it with pylons. It works quite well. We should probably apply that same logic to all of the buildings, because uh, if you start building a building here, it, it really wastes a lot of your time um, in resource collection. So anyways, um, so, so the alpha problem. So Ideally, these would be colored, and then we could add different colors for different types of units, possibly. Um, but the the problem is, um, I could find lots of ways to, you know, do a single alpha channel. Like if you just want to draw, like a circle on the screen and add an alpha to it, that's fine. But what if you want to overlap circles with alpha, um, and then where they they overlap, obviously that add, that's more color. It should be stronger. Um, that doesn't appear to be possible in OpenCV, which is shocking, but um, I don't think it is. Like I, I, like I said, I, I can find lots of ways to give a, an alpha channel to a, to, a, to a group of objects, or they could overlap initially, and then you apply alpha, but you don't have like the brighter overlap part. Anyway, if, if someone could figure that one out, um, I'd like to see it just curiously. I, I just I feel like that's a huge, huge oversight in OpenCV if that like, doesn't exist. <laughs> but, but anyway... Um, Wow, we're definitely in trouble. We have a single stalker, and we're almost 10 minutes into the game. Oh, boy, here comes the... <laughs> this doesn't end well, guys. Wow, where are they? There they are. <laughs> uh, good game. All right. So the visuals are all set, and uh, basically we're ready to start training. So this was obviously just random. Um, I can tell you right now, the media, you know, we're, we, I, at least I've never witnessed a game where an AI that makes random choices um, like this beats medium. It just does not happen. So, so, um, so you have to, first of all, compete against the easy AI instead. Um, but I'll talk about that and a, a few more things in the next tutorial. I'll we'll talk about the training data and all that um, and the findings from running this um, a little longer with building some training data, trying out the model, seeing how things went. So anyways, that's what we're going to do in the next video. If you've got questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in another video.